In the last video, we spoke about interior architecture and set up our service library to contain our business logic and data access layer. One of the things you'll notice though is that the service library project is actually not within the same folder as the solution or API. This is one of those things that Visual Studio does very poorly, which is folder management. What we can do though is copy this, move it inside of the same directory as the API and solution, remove the project and reload it. But let's go ahead and take one step further and actually organize this in a more modern way. And simply what I mean by that is just create a bunch of folders to organize our code. So let's create a source folder and the source folder will create contain our recipe book API, our service library, and any other class libraries that you'll need for the actual application. And the next one we will create is a test folder. So this one will contain any of the integration tests, unit tests, any of those things. And the last folder we will create is a build folder. So this will have your build scripts. You can subsequently make a deploy or documents folder to have any of your readmes or any kind of other documentations in them as well. Let's move our projects inside of the source folder now. So we're going to take our API. I'm going to cut it, paste it in here. Then going to grab the service library and do the same. And now if we try to load these projects in our solution, they shouldn't be able to load. So I'm just going to unload them and then just reload them. So you guys can see that they no longer work. So I'm just going to now remove them. What we could do is just right click add the existing projects back, but you want to also maintain the folder structuring that we have now created. And by doing that, we can create a virtual folder. So Visual Studio, like I said, doesn't do a very good job of actually maintaining the folder structures for you. So you'll have to create the almost virtual folders or tests so that it maintains its structure. And then when you want to add the appropriate project, make sure you select the folder and then add them accordingly. So I'm going to go source and then add my API. Same thing in the service library. And now our folder structures will match perfectly. Now let's actually go in our project and fix some of our dependencies because all of the dependencies are in relative pathing and we have now changed the service library to be within the same folder. So we're going to remove this as a dependency and we're just going to add it back. So that should resolve that. And now let's resolve our Docker compose. So the Docker compose expected the API to be in the root folder, but now we moved it into the source. So let's go edit the CS proj here first and say that the Docker compose is now two folders up from here. And one of the other things you'll need to do is tell it the context. So sometimes it does it, but sometimes it doesn't, which is tells the Docker file context. And you'll want to do the same thing, point it to directories above as well. So we're going to save that. Now let's go resolve the directory within the Docker compose file. So you want to go your Docker compose, open up your YAML, and you'll just want to say that this is now within a source folder. Save the changes. And we're just going to run the Docker Compose to make sure that it actually still works. Perfect, it still runs. So we're just going to stop that now. So now we resolved all of our dependencies here and our references are all now restored. I'm just going to very quickly show you an example of what would be in a build folder. So let's go in here and let's add a new file. And this is just called build.bat just to run a command prompt. Say yes to that. And we're going to open this up. I'm just going to be using Visual Studio Code to open that up. And I will just kind of show you guys what we're going to be doing. So the first thing we need to do is actually navigate to our API. So we're going to go up a directory. And then we're going to go down into the source. And then from the source, we're going to be going into the API. Okay. And what we want to do is do a .NET restore to download any kind of the packages. And then we will do a .NET build and say no restore because we previously done the restore in a separate step. And then we're just going to do a .NET publish 
and set the output folder to be a folder called deploy. So, and we want that to be in the same directory as all the source and builds. So we're going to go up to and call it deploy. Save that. And now what should happen when we run the build is, is a folder called deploy should be created. So I'm going to open a terminal here. And we're going to navigate inside the build folder. And we're going to run build.bat. And we should see a deploy folder get created with all of the artifacts to be deployed. So all of this is 100% optional, but it does set you up for a really good development experience, especially when you start working with a bunch of other developers. You'll have a common place for all of your actual code that you'll need to write. You have a common place for all of your tests that you'll be writing. Have a common place for any specific builds that the CI system would be running, and then any of the other folders that will go into Git Ignore or something, such as the deploy folders, will be in an expected place. So that was a very quick video just to get things a little bit more organized. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I'll see you guys next time.